really cool because if you like the song he said by Group One Crew, now you can uh, get to uh, listen from the people. Listen from. I am like going, I'm losing my mind here today. I'm going to apologize right out of the gate. I'm on pain pills. Uh, <laughs> quite honestly, I got something going on and like I can't even think straight. Uh, we got uh, Blanca and Manuel from uh, Group One Crew uh, live in studio with us today. Thank you guys uh, for coming in and being on the show. Uh, now let's do this. Uh, since we got. Blanca and Manuel here. Uh, <laughs> that music scares me. No, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. Uh, I want to do something new with you guys called fill in the blank. Okay. All right. This is where I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to fill in the blank about the other person. Go. How fun is that? Okay. Yeah. Like, like, like. like here you go. Uh, Blanca, you would fill in this blank. I like that Manuel is fill in the blank. Responsible. Re- really? Yes. You're the responsible one, Manuel? That I am, Walter. Okay. That I am. So you actually uh, you make sure she's on time and, and, and you know, you hold it down that way, huh? Well we're both we're both pretty um punctual, you know? Yeah. Most of the times if I'm late it's because I had something bad to eat the night before. Okay, well that's more than I needed TMI. to know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes. All right. TMI. Just trying to get I close think and personal. Manny's on pain pills as well. I, Let's I, just must be. throw that out there. Uh, so, okay. Uh, now, uh, Manuel, you finish this one. It's so cool when Blanca speaks. Really? Yes. You like I, always, I always tell her that she has, that uh, uh, one day she's in a, it's going to really hit her how much um, power that the Lord has given her to speak and how much influence that she has over oh. the crowd that we're in front of. Well, look at that. That's so nice. Uh, okay. Uh, Manuel's advice is usually fill in the blank, Blanca. Um, usually... <laughs> Iffy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's usually good. It's usually good. Usually you, you said good. usually. I did say so. usually. All right. Uh, besides singing, Blanca is great at filling that blank, Manuel. She's actually a really good dancer. Really? Well, that makes sense. Oh, really? Blanca, you seem shocked by that. Yeah, well, a little really bit. good because every time we try, <laughs> we have to learn something from our backup dancers when we have dancers. Yeah. She always gets it way before I do. <laughs> yeah. All right, I All can right. see that. So the truth trying. comes out. You see, I he would see never that. admit it unless we were playing this. So. Uh, well, I like that. That's Everyone good. heard it. Now. That's good. I think I'm gonna get background dancers. I think that. <laughs> I think everybody should have background dancers Don't laugh, at some Zach, point. It's in time. you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, and uh, Manuel gets on my nerves when he fill in that blank because uh, it was getting too sugary sweet. Manuel gets on my nerves when he... Oh, come on, so be honest. Hard. Oh, because there's so many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 like, it's, it's, you guys travel. You guys, uh, we see you more together than like uh, like Manuel and his wife. Like we see you two everywhere. It's like always you guys. So yes. you guys travel. That's how you learn a lot about someone is when you travel with them. So uh, like, it, it, does he do things that are annoying when you travel? Yes, Manuel. One of the things. One of the many things. Yes. Is he can go without eating for long periods of time. But you can't. I cannot. And then it's uh, my wife and I are the same way. Like once I'm working and I can get past it, but she like gets a headache and has to eat. And then the world has to stop until we feed her. That's very true. Really? (laughs) Wow. See, now if I had asked Manuel that same question and be like, yeah, she can't go uh, many hours without eating. And that's annoying. (laughs) All right. So there you go. Uh, We've learned more about uh, Manuel and Blanca from Group One Crew. Uh, I actually want to touch on uh, something serious and some stuff off of your new album, Fearless. And we'll do that in 10 right here on The Wall Show. Just to have the night of my life. Show and it just got all clubby up in here. Uh, we got the Group One Crew, uh, and that's a little a taste of what you can get on their new album, Fearless, which I uh, I've ingested and I've listened to the whole thing a bunch of times, and I do really like it. So nice work on that, you guys. Thank you. Uh, we got Blanca and Manuel with us now. Uh, Man, uh, Blanca, I actually want to talk to you about something serious uh, for a minute because I know uh, that you recently uh, lost your dad, and that's one of those things that, that that's tough. Were you guys like really close? Yes, um, my father wasn't a big part of my life uh, growing up. Right. He was into the drugs and alcohol. He had a really rough childhood and upbringing. And um, he, actu- he actually was the first saved in my family. He gave really? his life to the Lord and came back for his kids. He, he found us in Orlando. He was living in Puerto Rico at the time. 
and um, came to apologize for everything he had put us through and wanted to just bring us to church. And I ended up giving my life to the Lord through my father. So we had a very tight relationship. We had, you know, all these years to kind of, he helped me with my faith um, and grow in that area and just uh, kind of make up for all the time we had missed growing up. It's sad, like, when you lose somebody, obviously, that, that means so much to you, like your dad or your mom or whatever. And, and sometimes it's easy to get consumed by that. What's, like, your best memory of him? Like, what's the thing that you're like, yep, that was my dad, you know? Like, what's the good thing? The best part of my dad, he was the most loving, outgoing person ever. His personality was so huge, and I feel like I get a lot of that from him just being on stage and, and just loving people he was always like that he was also a christian salsa singer in puerto rico so nice that's a yeah, that's was, a, uh, a genre we don't have here yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um anytime i there's songs that i hear on the radio and i'm like oh that's so my dad you know yeah. or uh, meeting people along the way and, and just the impact that he had on their lives so it's really cool who did you get your hair from your mom or your dad my dad oh actually, really yeah <laughs> he had an afro <laughs> uh, <laughs> now there's a song on your album uh called fearless like here's a little uh snippet of that Music's one of those powerful things that helps people get through a ton of stuff. And I could see that being a song that helps somebody get through their own loss, you know. And so is there anything on the album that is kind of funneled through some of, you know, the emotions that you were going through with your dad and stuff? I think a lot of it, a lot of it is. Yeah. Um, there's many songs. There's Fearless. Uh, there's um, Darkest Valley. There's um, even He Said, you know coming back and looking at that song now it, I wasn't going through the loss of my father at the time recording this record some of it and then half of it was right with him so just seeing how God you know even before and after he was giving me um, comfort and words and and just as these songs could be for someone else, they were for me as well. Well, you know how, like, a lot of times, we're talking to uh, Blanca and Manuel from Group One Crew, for uh, people who don't have the gift of music in their life, you know, we, we cling to that a lot of times, because sometimes that can speak to us more than a sermon or a friend or anything. It's amazing the power that has. So being able to create that is really cool uh, for you. But now, was there somebody else's music during this time that you found, you know, did that for you? Like, as you're just walking through this hard time, with the loss of your dad, was there some other song or some other, you know, music that you're like, oh my goodness, that clicks for me now, you know? Um, I think, I'm trying to think of, of music. Honestly, any worship music, right. I think really songs that, that I've loved or whether it's Hillsong or listening to Carrie Job and, and these different people that just have str such a strong connection with the Lord. Um, brings comfort and healing during that time for me just yeah. being able to you know because sometimes you through, hear them in a different the, light you too. do you mm -hmm. do you you're able to say through this crazy time in my life that that i'm going through right now i'm still choosing to um to love you and and to give you glory so definitely the um 10,000 Reasons. That is a great song, oh, that Matt it, Redman song. It, it makes me cry every time I hear yeah. it. It's such an amazing song. That's a good one. Now, I appreciate you kind of talking about that stuff. Manuel, I'm getting to some stuff you've written on the album, a little less sensitive. Foxy Lady. Don't, <laughs> don't think we're not talking about that. We'll do that in 10 right here on the Wally Show with Group One Crew. It's going down. Show, and that's new music from Group One Crew off of their album Fearless. And uh, that is one of my favorite uh, songs on the album, though. So uh, nicely done there. We got Blanca and Manuel live in studio with us. Now, I, I want to get into your personal lives because that's what I uh, do. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's fun for me. Uh, and, and we just talked uh, with Blanca seriously about like stuff going on with her and losing her father and stuff. Now, uh, Manuel, uh, I, I don't know if people know this or not, but you're married to Angela Johnson, who is perhaps better known as uh, Bonquiqui from Mad TV. Mm -hmm. Welcome to King Burger, where we can do it your way, but don't get crazy. Which I love. I mean, I love that. It, like, now, when she's at a show with you, do people come up and, and do, like, the Bon Quee Quee stuff? Yeah. She's yeah. The most, 
She's the most famous non-famous person I know. Yeah, yeah. And, and and she's famous because like it's Bon Quique that's really famous for that, you know, yeah. which is funny because I think Betty, our our uh, person that works Betty on our Rock show, Betty Rock scared her because she yeah. just ran up to her and's like, "My name's Betty. I will cut you." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, nice to meet you. Too. Yeah. She's, she's so sweet about it though. Yeah. She didn't even deliver it right, you know. Cut <laughs> you. Right. Yeah. So uh, you know, now here's the thing though, because it seems like you guys come from maybe two different worlds, you know. She She's doing the acting thing in L.A., you know, and you're doing like this Christian music thing. Like, how did your worlds intersect? Like, how did you, know, you meet? It was it was so random. My best friend's um, wife used to live with her before all of this blew up, and uh, she just called me out of nowhere. We were out on tour, and she was just like, "Hey." She called you? Yeah, um, oh, Diana. Oh, your like, friend. Okay. Yeah. She was like, "Hey, there's this girl. I really think you should meet." You know, and I was like, oh, "Okay." So she sent me her. Her like all her info, her our comedy um, central special, and so I was like looking at it all because I was like, all right, if I'm gonna give a comedian a chance, she got to be funny. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I can't be with somebody who's a comedian; they're not funny. Oh so, yeah, I was. I looked at all her stuff and and just gave it a try. And literally, I had two days off on one of the tours we were on, and I just flew to LA and did like a little first date, blind date. Type no of way! Thing. Yeah. You flew out to meet a girl? That doesn't smack of desperate at all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so okay, now let me. Let, I know there are people that are probably oversaved in this world and would just automatically think, "Well, she's on Mad TV. She can't be a believer. Why is Manuel unequally yoked? Yeah. It says it in the Bible, <laughs> you know." And, and so, like, was was her world? Because that's a tough world to work yeah. in with your faith. Like, so was was her world very different from what yours is being surrounded by the Christian world? Very much so. Yeah. You know, her world, there are no boundaries, like you said. There's mm. no what you can't say. Yeah. Uh, she doesn't do she doesn't do shows in churches or anything. She's very much a mainstream comedian. Right. But everything that she does is clean and she'll talk about Jesus. She'll say it's it's the most amazing thing you'll ever see because you'll go to a show and she can say anything she wants and they will just accept it. And for some reason she just has she just has favor, man, and she'll sell out shows everywhere and just doesn't hide from her faith, doesn't That's hide from cool, anything. Man. It's pretty it's pretty impressive to see that, you know. Sometimes I get a little like, oh man, because she can just she just is freely her, you yeah. know, and doesn't worry and, about the backlash. And the weird thing is, yeah, is inside of uh we're talking to uh, Manuel and Blanca from Group One Crew, is the weird thing is inside of this world, inside of the, the Christian bubble, so to speak, is you do have to watch how you do and say because you can take a few arrows once or twice. Yeah, and I mean the beautiful thing about it though is that she kinda helps me, you know, we help each other out like although she is in a mainstream world, I remind her a lot that her obligation is first and foremost to being a godly woman so yes you can and do being a it. wife and serving you good yeah. call <laughs> good call very smart manuel wait a second <laughs> you know i feel like i'm getting to, to know you better especially through the lyrics of your songs as i went through a bunch of these uh recently and and so uh you're a football fan right uh manuel i dig football yeah yeah i think you do are, are, now are you uh you're either a patriots fan or a cowboys fan i'm thinking no neither neither yes really. you are you are such a liar patriots which one <laughs> Cowboys? Yeah. You do like the Patriots. I do not. Do you know who the Patriots are? No. At <laughs> all. <laughs> I don't like the Patriots. You don't? Really? I've been to the Cowboys games because I know one of the coaches, so he yeah. gets his tickets. But other than that. See, that's not weird. Anymore. I like the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you don't like them, why did you shout them out on your uh, on your song, Dangerous? What are dangerous women? Yeah, you Wait, shout, you shout it out. Oh, Drew Bledsoe. Yeah, see, look, look, right here. The, that's not Cowboy. No gassed up homie Petro. Tell about the blood that they drew when he bled. See, Drew Bledsoe. Called, you just shouted that's out the a, quarterback. That's called wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate Bledsoe and all he's done. You also uh, have a song on there for your wife that uh, I will probably throw a flag on for this line. I'm responsible to keep you happy daily. Make this house my home. Nicely done, man. Nicely done. I, that, I can guarantee you that's the first Christian album that has ever worked in the word Fox and Light. Uh, <laughs> it's so, it's so true, man. Uh, my wife's a cool chick. <laughs> that's awesome, man. So, okay. So, uh, I do want to talk to you about uh, your song, He Said. And I'm curious if you've heard something that I've been getting a couple emails about uh, that song. We'll talk about that with Group One Crew in uh, 10 minutes right here on The Wally Show. This is the Wally Show. We got a 
uh, Blanca and Manuel from Group One Crew uh, live in the uh, studio with us here. And so, he said is a great song. Thank you. What possible problem could anybody have with a song like he said? But leave it to Christians. They'll find one. Uh, yeah. So uh, have you guys uh, heard anything? Like, has anybody said anything to you about the theology of this song? Yeah, we yeah. got we Oh, got you did? Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't just me. Because I've had people email me and, and say, you know, like, I think their theology is all wrong on this song. Uh, yeah. And it yeah. comes down to, like, splitting hairs and semantics, I think, quite honestly. It really, yeah. So what, what have the you big, guys heard? Like, the big line, I will say, is in the chorus, it says... Um, I won't give you more than you can take. Right. I might let you bend, but I won't let you break. Right. So that's, that's, that's that the, is the topic the, right and now. And yeah. here's the thing. Like, there's a, a ton of suicidal Christians, what I call it, is like, that are like, you know, God will make you break because that's when you need Jesus the most, when right. you break. And we were essentially saying the same thing. It's just we're writing a song so we can't write a sentence in that line. We're right. saying at the point where you realize that you cannot do it anymore, that's when the Lord steps in. We just happen to say, he might let you bend, but won't let you break. If right. you want to take it as he'll let you break, cool. You know, whatever yeah. you want to take it well, as. Well, the truth of the fine. matter is, is that our breaking point is not our end. You know, like right. we might feel like we've completely broke apart, but that's when God's like, okay, here I am to step in. You know, you're not broken. You're not, this isn't the end. You can continue on, even though it may feel like, you're completely broken, you know? I think and it was a, a lot of it was on that verse, you know, the Corinthian verse talking about, you know, a lot of people hit us up and said it. You know, God won't give you more temptation. temptation. Right. Yes, but then it's what, like, dude, you know, I think in their mind, the first thing they think of temptation is is either sexual sin or something really bad. You know, right. when temptation to us can be a myriad of things. It can be losing your faith. It can be uh, not being a giver. It can be all these things that you're tempted not to do that's keeping you from, from being good. We all struggle with different things. Right. So the song was more... Like, we were hoping that people would get the global sense of what we were trying to say inst instead of trying to break down that one line That's as if it. we were trying to make a theological statement, which it wasn't that. We it get hung up sometimes on the, the letter of the law and not the spirit of the law inside of faith. And that's why we have so many de different denominations. And that's mm -hmm. why we can't get along a lot of times, which is frustrating, I think. And I think for you guys it would have to be very frustrating. Like when you create this art, that there's truth all through that song. But because somebody's semantics about a word or a line is different you, they just like throw the whole thing out and like almost throw out like everything you've ever done and here's the you know here's the beautiful part about it yes. you know they can write as much as they want and and people can try to question our theology which it's to, to us it's it's silly but the reality of that song is there we have had numerous numerous emails of testimonies of people who have literally said i wanted to kill myself but now i'm not because i heard your song he said when we get countless of emails like right. that, I look at the theologians that are, you know, I mean, I'm like, you can break it, down our music yeah. all you want. But when we got people that are not killing themselves because right. of this song, we're just going to choose not to listen to what you <laughs> yeah. have to say. Yeah. Because it overpasses it just, everything, you know? It's like yeah. at the end of it, if we get caught up in that, then we start feeling sad or we, oh, what, you know, why do they think that of our music? That's not what we meant. Now everyone's getting... But then we focus on the positive and we see these emails that come in and people writing in and just pouring out their lives and saying this song helped me through this season and we say okay you know it almost so it, makes it, it, makes it, it almost makes it silly to really think about it that i'm like are we really entertaining emails about theology on this song when oh yeah it'll drive you got you crazy. people who are literally it's saving lives like it's like man Jesus, Jesus is in there. Oh, I get it, man. But the thing is, uh, sometimes we get caught up sometimes in talking about Jesus and, and, and things like that instead of being him. And that's that's a dangerous place, and that's legalism, and that's where people get mired in. And actually, I feel bad for those people because when you're in that level, you're not experiencing the relationship of Jesus in your own life a lot of times, too. And so they're miserable, and so they want to make other people miserable and just debate stuff at nauseum. So I love the song. Okay, oh, so I you. think it's good. I think you're on point. I will go on record, and it, and I will go down with Group 1 Group. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, Are you uh, sure? Uh, yeah, maybe that not. Might be the <laughs> yeah, maybe not. They're on their own. <laughs> hey, if you want to uh, hang out with us, you can do that today. Uh, if you're in the Nashville area, we're going to be at the Lifeway store uh, in downtown Nashville for a unplugged show with Group 1 Crew. Free show, brown bag. It'll be a lot of fun, so yeah, make sure, sure you come out uh, 1230 to 130. And I've seen these guys do what they do live. It's awesome, and they will they will give you everything. Blanca will be a sweaty mess by the end of this. <laughs>
Well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> hey, I don't sweat. I glisten. I uh, know. Okay? You sweat, girl. <laughs> I appreciate you guys coming in. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks, Wally. <laughs>